How do you write a synopsis? What is an agent looking for? What is a synopsis? That's what I'm talking about today. My name's Stephen Ayan. I'm a traditionally published fantasy author. I've been published by Orbit Books and Andrew Robot. And part of the process I did many years ago, and I've done many times since, is writing a synopsis. Something I don't like to do, nobody really likes to do it, but we all have to. So what is a synopsis? I'm going to talk through my experience and also provide some advice and tips direct from agents. I've done some research online. I've also used Twitter for the Ask Agent hashtag. This is where people have asked agents a number of questions and they've answered them, several of them, about synopsis. And I'm also going to give you some advice from my agent about her top tips for writing a synopsis. First of all, what is a synopsis? It's not a blurb, it's not a cover letter or query letter, it's something completely different. If you don't know what a query letter is, I've done a video on that already, go and check that out and that talks about it. A pitch is something sometimes referred to as an elevator pitch. This is something that could be a paragraph or two paragraphs that you might include in your covering letter, or it could be something that you have something completely different. A blurb is what's often referred to as the text that goes on the back of your book. So this summarizes the book in an exciting way and kind of pitches it to a potential reader. A synopsis is a totally different animal. This is where you're giving it to the audience of one, the agent, and you are spoiling the story. You want to tell them everything. The reason is they need to have read your chapter samples that you've given them and your kind of pitch information, your covering letter saying who you are and what you've done and what the book is about in general. The synopsis then tells them if you're able to tell the story in a convincing way, if it's got good payoffs, good character development and story arcs, or does it just kind of fizzle? This is what they're looking for. They want to have the whole picture in front of them. So you don't do, and then this happened, da, 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 what's gonna happen next? You spoil everything. You reveal the full story to them. They're not gonna share it with anybody but they need to know that you can tell the whole story in an effective and interesting way. Does the story fizzle out? Does it have a satisfying payoff? Is it 380 pages of investigation and 20 pages of just solving it? Which, you know, the balance is obviously off. So they're looking at your synopsis to understand how you structure the story, how you're telling it and what you're doing with it. So my research has shown that from looking at all of this information online, agents want the start of the synopsis to be the hook. This isn't necessarily the pitch, but this is summing up the book in a really pithy and exciting kind of way. I'll give you an example. See if this book sounds familiar from a very kind of stepped back perspective. A small and unassuming character sets forth on an adventure of a lifetime that will change the fate of the world and the story is actually about that even the smallest person can change the course of the world. And this person goes on an epic adventure and destroys the most powerful object of evil in the entire world. Of course, I'm talking about Lord of the Rings, yes. But if I'd done it in the way that some people think you should do a synopsis, which is there's a hobbit who finds this ring and then he goes into the so-and-so and then he meets these people and then he meets these other people, then he meets a wizard and then it, that's not the synopsis. That's you laying out the beats of all the story and that isn't what they want. They want to, to take a step back and explain the story in a slightly more interesting and dynamic way without just laying out the events in sequence. Up front, you need to tell them who is the main character? What is the story arc? What are the stakes of the story? Why should they care about this person? What is the interesting center of the story that you're creating and not just doing beat by beat of what goes on in the story itself? The next thing they've said you should include is obviously the genre. You should have some knowledge of the genre. I've talked about this in other videos before. You should know your genre fairly well that you're pitching into. So you should have read some of the books in that genre, but you should also know who some of the movers and shakers are, who are the big names, who are the big players, so that you have an awareness of what's going on, the subgenres, and where your book might sit. And that's what they want to know as well, that you have some industry awareness because it is important. You don't need to have read every single book. You don't need to follow everything, but some genre awareness is important. One of the questions that somebody asked on Twitter using the Ask Agent hashtag was quite relevant to this. They said, 
Do you think a synopsis should focus more on the details of the plot in a blow by blow account or the character arc and how that develops? And several agents answered this. The first one said you should focus on the main character arc. The second one said the major plot points rather than the character arc tell me the things that happen so I can get an idea of the twists and turns. And then the third agent said, hopefully the two are intertwined, which is what they should be. They, but they prioritize character and their story arc as that's what the reader engages with. So even if you take all three of those different, slightly different answers and you can combine them, you're not laying out the beats of what goes on X, Y, Z, A, B, C, all the way along. You don't do that, that is not a synopsis. It, you kind of have to know your story and find a way to step back from it and say, what is the story about? What is the main character's development and their arc? What is the main theme of the book if you have one and you're aware of it? These are the key things that you should have in your synopsis. Going back to my example of Lord of the Rings, rather than listing out each of the steps that Frodo went on their journey, what you would talk about is how they're impacted by the events, that they meet dangerous monsters and creatures and it changes them, it changes their perspective of the world, it makes them realise that they lived a very sheltered life and that there were greater stakes in their own comfort and they can't hide away. And even if they went back to the Shire and pretended that none of this was going to affect them, eventually it would and that they'd just be being a coward by hiding there. So this kind of realisation dawns on this character that he can't live under, literally under the hill and pretend that it's all fine and just stick his head in the sand. It doesn't work that way. So that's kind of the theme of the story. But I haven't talked about orcs, I haven't talked about riders, I haven't talked about rings or anything. So it's finding a way to take a step back from your story and telling it in that kind of a way. How long should your synopsis be? My research and from my own experience, all of the agents have said one to two pages max. This is absolute max because if you can't condense your story into that kind of detail and that level, then you're doing something wrong. You need to go back again and find a way to tell it in a more concise way. The next thing they said is keep it relevant. If you have a mystery story, then obviously you want to build up some of the stuff in the synopsis about there's a murder and there is various clues and there's various suspects, but you have to give the payoff as well. And you wouldn't lay out every single clue, but you might say there are a number of red herrings that leads the investigator on a merry trail around, I don't know, the city whilst looking for who the murderer is and he encounters some people who help him. But you don't need to say who they are, but you could say he encounters a number of people who are barriers and cause problems for him, but he also meets an ally who helps him put him on the right path that leads him to the resolution and so on. So you lay out the story, the payoff, the stakes, who the character is, what's happening to them without listing everything beat by beat. If there are critical details in the story, you must include them in the synopsis. So as I mentioned with the mystery, if there's an, an important feature that balances the whole story, it's the kind of pivot point, mention it in the synopsis. They are not the reader. The synopsis is not designed for the reader. It's designed for the agent to understand your ability to tell the story in a distanced way. They want to see that you've structured it. This is what they're looking for, not what is the whole of the story, it's how do you tell this story? Another question that some people asked was, what if you're asked for a short synopsis? One person said 300 words, another person said 500. And they asked agents, well, what does that mean? How do you then crush something down from two or one pages to 300 or 500 words? What should we include? And they talked about the essentials that you have to get across. Someone said, is it the exciting incident and the main character's introduction? the main obstacles and the ending. Is that kind of what we're looking for in a very brief synopsis? And they said, yes, you've got it in one. It needs to be the whole story from beginning to end with the main narrative thread that runs through the story. Give them the main principal actors, the characters, what is the plot, what are the obstacles, what's the payoff and what's the ending. Really tight, really lean and that's incredibly difficult to do, especially if you're condensing 100,000, 200,000 words down to a page and then you have to condense that down 
even further. You have to miss out so much detail. I know it's incredibly hard to do. It's the worst thing ever. It's worse than writing the book, is spending something that you spend years on and suddenly you have to then squash it down to a tiny little document. And it's, it just feels really awful, like everything's hanging off this one document. And it isn't. They're obviously going to look at the material, but the synopsis is important. If this video is useful or any of the other ones that you've watched on my channel, don't forget to check out the Headspace writing community that I've built. This is a private writing forum on Discord for writers where we help each other grow. Check out the link below for more information. Here are five tips from my agent on how to write a synopsis. Number one, when you write the synopsis, do it in a third person omniscient voice in the present tense. So you would say, John goes on an adventure to fight the dragon. You don't do it in the past tense of saying, he went on an adventure to fight a dragon. Tip number two, give away the ending. If there are any twists in the plot that are major, that hang off the rest of the story, reveal them. Tell them what happens. Tell them the twists, tell them the payoffs, tell them the ending, especially the ending. Don't leave any questions in there that go unanswered if they're important to the plot. Tip number three, focus on the main arc of the story. You don't need to include every single subplot. If there are other threads that go off and might lead to other things, if this is a multi-book series, then those threads pay off in other stories. Don't mention them in the synopsis. Focus on the main thread of what this first story is. Because even when you're selling a series, like I did, I sold a couple of trilogies, the publisher and before that the agent is focused purely on that first book. That's the only thing they're thinking about. They're obviously, they, could, they want to know about the rest, but in that first moment, when you're first approaching an agent, they're not looking at, is this book one of a 10 book series and they've planned all 10. They don't actually care about that. They might say a 10 book series is too much, but what they're focused on is the material that you're sending them in. They want to know that you can tell this story effectively. They'll read the sample material, they'll read your covering letter, but when they read your synopsis, they want to understand that you know how to tell this story from beginning to end in a satisfying way where the readers will get to the end and go, okay, that made sense. They won't get to the end and go, you haven't planted any of the clues, there was no information in the whole story, and then suddenly they just solve it right at the end. It makes no sense. And you've seen books and TV shows and you've read other things yourself when that happens, where the information just wasn't there and it didn't make any sense. So that's what they're looking for, that it all works in the narrative story arc. Tip number four, focus on the main characters. Don't include the entire cast. If you've got three main points of view or two or one, focus on that. I know there'll be a supporting cast and they may play a role in the story. If it's critical, mention them in passing, but don't give too much information away. Don't layer it all in there because you just don't have the space. So only include the critical characters. Tip number five, the language should be fairly neutral. It doesn't need to be full of adjectives. So the John is a heroic warrior who fights bravely against, it's, it's not that. This isn't a sales document. This is where you're just saying what happens in the story. You're laying it out. John goes on an adventure that changes him from a farm boy to a hero who saves the world by doing X, Y, and Z. You know, that's the kind of very high level pitch, but you lay out in a neutral way. You don't fill it full of sparkly language. You're not trying to sell this to the person. You're trying to tell the story. And her sixth tip as a bonus one was keep it between one and two pages. Don't go any longer than that. If you find you're going over that, you need to go back to the beginning and start again. As I said, the synopsis is only part of the submission process, part of the documents that you would send to an agent. Typically, they will ask for a cover letter or query letter. I've done a video on that. They'll ask for the synopsis, which I've talked about, and of course, your sample material. This could be so many chapters or so many thousand words. You have to tailor it to the specifications of every single agent. You need to read their submission guidelines carefully, do not do a blunderbuss approach. You need to tailor it on, on a one-to-one -one basis. If one agent says they want five chapters and the next one wants 10 chapters, give them exactly what they want. If you just kind of throw everything out there and just think, oh, they'll just pick it up, they won't. They won't do that. They've got too much 
other material coming in every day, they don't have enough time, if you can't follow the rules, they'll delete your email and they'll move on. They'll just reject it and move on. So follow the rules, pay attention to what they're asking for, look at the website, look at the social media, find out who the person is and pay close attention to the synopsis. That's it for today. I'll be back soon with another video.